Welcome to AP Physics C Mechanics. My name is Mr. Taylor, and this year we'll be flipping the classroom quite often, which means you watch the video at home, and then we work on problems together in the classroom where you can ask for help either from me or from your peers. Let's begin. We'll start off on page 14 in the textbook. You can follow along. I'll go through the important points and explain them. And if you have questions, bring your questions to class and we can discuss them there. All right, so we'll start off with section 2-3 on page 14, position and displacement. Position is where something is located. So for example, if I was located at x equals 1, that would be my position at x equals 1 or x equals negative 2, whatever. We have the positive direction to the right, as is conventional, and the negative direction to the left, and the origin is at x equals 0. No big surprise there. Okay, our displacement is our change in position, and it's always the final location or the final position minus the initial position. So sometimes you'll see it as x2 minus x1, or you might see it as x sub f minus x sub i for x final minus x initial. And the change in position is called the displacement labeled delta x. Or sometimes you'll see it as the letter d for displacement. All right, let's look at a couple of examples of uh, displacement. So for our first example, our initial position, our first position is b at 5 meters. So right there, and we're going to move from 5 meters to 12 meters. So what is our displacement? Well, x2 minus x1, so that would be 12 minus 5 equals plus 7. Displacement is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. So the magnitude of my displacement is 7 meters, and the direction of the displacement is in the positive direction. So I started here and went there, so I have moved in the positive direction. So my displacement is positive 7, where 7 is the magnitude and plus is the direction. All right, let's look at a second example. Moving from 5, now moving from 5 to 1. Okay, so I start off at 5, or at, I end up at 1. So that's x2. I started at 5, so that's my x1. So 1 minus 5 is x2 minus x1. So my, now my displacement is minus 4 meters. I started here, and I displaced 4 meters in the negative direction. 4 is my magnitude. Negative is my direction. And let's look at one more example here. Going from uh, 3 to negative 7. So I start off at 3 and I go to negative 7. So my displacement is negative 7 minus 3 or negative 10 meters. And you'll see that is the length of that displacement is 10 meters and it's in the negative direction. Section 2.4 Average Velocity and Average Speed will start off by graphing our position as a function of time. So we'll start off with a very simple example here. This one is, is kind of boring, but it's a simple example. It's the graph of position for an armadillo that is stationary at x equals negative 2 meters for all times t. So on our x-axis, we see that t is our concept on the x-axis with units of seconds, and x, or position, is our concept for the y-axis, and that is position in meters. So in other words, where it would be located on that number line that we've just looked at. We're going to start off talking with linear motion, that is motion in a straight line. You'll notice that the uh, name of this chapter is motion along a straight line for chapter 2. Uh, we will talk about motion in two dimensions uh, in a later chapter. Okay, so here we see the graph at all times t, as time ticks on, 
the, the position of the armadillo doesn't change. It's always at x equals negative 2. Very simple example. Let's look at a little more interesting example. Here, now the armadillo is walking along a straight line. And if we measure where his position is at different times, we can make a graph of where the armadillo is as time goes on. So at time t equals 0, that's our starting time. The armadillo is located at a position of negative 5 meters. Uh, as time goes on, he walks forward. And at time 3 seconds, he is located at the origin. And then one second later, he's located at a position of x equals 2 meters. There's a lot of information we can get from this graph. Of course, we can see where he is at all times. But how much the graph is changing is an indication of how fast the armadillo is moving. So there's many ways to describe how fast something is going. So let's start off uh, with an expression, the average velocity. So what is the average velocity of the armadillo from time equals one second to time equals four seconds? Well, our equation for average velocity is how much the position changed or the displacement divided by the amount of time it took to cover that ground. So our displacement, of course, is x2 minus x1. And our change in time is the time from where they are at x2 to the time, uh, the difference in time from x2 and x1. Our time x2 is at 4 seconds. Our time x1 is at 1 second. So the delta t then is the t2 minus t1, or 4 minus 1, is 3 seconds. And the position uh, was 2 meters at x2 and negative 4 meters at x1. So that's a displacement of positive 6 meters. So my average velocity then would be positive 6 divided by 3. And our units, it was 6 meters and it was 3 seconds. So that, of course, equals 2 meters per second. And that is our answer for our average velocity between one second and four seconds. There's also another term called the average speed, and there is quite a difference. The average velocity we just went over is the displacement over the time, but the average speed is the total distance divided by time. Sometimes these can be the same number, but other times they can be very different. Let's look at an example. All right, so here's an example of a difference between average velocity and average speed. Let's say I start right here uh, in the corner of the classroom, and I walk all the way around the room. So I'm going to walk around the perimeter of the classroom, and I'll come all the way back to where I started. OK? So I've walked all the way around the classroom. I'm right back where I started. So x2 minus x1 is going to be the same number. So I haven't gone anywhere. So my displacement is 0. So my average velocity is 0. However, my average speed, I take the sum of the four sides of the rectangle that I just walked. I add them all up, and I divide that number by the time it took me. And that is my average speed, which obviously will be something that isn't 0. All right, so another uh, good example of the difference between average velocity and average speed is sample problem 2-1 on page 16 in your textbook. So be sure and read through that. I'm not going to do it here for you. Uh, just read through that problem and make sure you understand uh, the differences. Okay, let's move on. Section 2-5, instantaneous velocity and speed. Average velocity was my velocity over some time interval. But what if I wanted to know what's my velocity at some instant? Okay, what's my velocity at some instant? Here's the graph that I used to calculate the average velocity. What if I wanted to know what is my velocity at the instant time equals one second? I would use an interval that is increasingly smaller and smaller, and I'd look at the average velocity as this delta t gets smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually this point right here has moved down the curve and it's right on top of this point. So in other words, the limit 
as the time interval goes to zero of the change in position or my displacement over time. And of course, this is the derivative, dx dt. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this right here at this moment, but th this video right here, the difference quotient formula, that is a video that goes into great detail on, on this. So definitely uh, you'll want to watch that one. Also, sample problem 2-2 talks more about instantaneous velocity as well. Okay, so let's note here, instantaneous velocity has magnitude and direction, whereas instantaneous speed is just the magnitude of that velocity. So if I had an instantaneous velocity of, just to pick a number, plus seven meters per second, then that is velocity because it has magnitude of seven and it has direction in the positive direction. So the velocity would be plus seven meters per second. The instantaneous speed would just be seven with no direction associated with it. 